Hi guys, welcome to part five of creating an anime environment in Blender. Today we're gonna to be going over render settings and freestyle lines. So we're gonna start off right here, use EV, we don't want to use cycles. Render samples around 80 for freestyle lines. Higher samples increases the better freestyle lines. I always put the shadows cube size and the cascade size to the max, and I almost always take off soft shadows because I like having crisp change in the color for shadows. Obviously your output, you want a PNG if you're doing a still, an MPEG-4 if you're doing an animation. Um, make sure your color is set to standard. So now we're gonna go into freestyle lines. So whatever you're doing, so like for this, we got a medieval house. I'm going to select the item, make sure that I put it into a layer. Uh, or a collection is what it's really called. So you can see here, I select my tutorial house, you hit M, new collection, and then I just name it a tutorial house. You can name it whatever you want, you can leave it what it is. Then when you come down to freestyle line settings, you're gonna create a new thing, which I have already made tutorial settings and select collection, and then select your tutorial collection. Now, I only select edge mark, and you come down here to stroke, put it to sketchy, rounds three. Rounds is how many times it goes over itself. And then we're gonna go to the thickness. Now I use a noise and a distance from camera. So these modifiers, you guys can copy the settings and everything. These modifiers are very good for still images. But if you're going to use these images, they don't work for, <laughs> they do not work for animations. So I'm gonna show you here, if I render this out and I show you guys, it looks pretty good. You can tweak the size and stuff like that. But if you use noise or distance from camera and you're using this in an animation, you're gonna get this like fuzzy TV staticky effect and it's, it's awful. So just use the basic freestyle lines and no modifiers on it. As you could see from that render, I had some problems with lines where they shouldn't have been and like this i had covered this in the geometry video but if you're looking at this right so the door for one thing what i can do is the door is separated from the geometry of the house at this point so i create the loop cuts on the house at that point and i merge those vertices that should get rid of the problem um, another thing you can do select your entire geometry hit shift n and recalculate your normals. If you have any flip normals, it can cause problems for your freestyle lines. Another thing that can happen is overlapping geometry can cause this problem. Um, sometimes merging some vertices, you know, you don't always wanna merge all your vertices. Uh, so if you have a problem area, merge those vertices. Another thing is you might have Excess geometry, maybe too much loop cuts. You might want to dissolve those loop cuts if they're not used. And that should get rid of all the problems. Like you can see here, it took me less than a minute and I fixed all the problems with our freestyle lines. So a lot of people think freestyle lines are complicated and everything, but they're not. It's, it's really simple, especially if you watch my geometry video and you use that, that technique of marking all your freestyle edges. If you are using like a cylinder, a tower, light post or anything like that, then I do recommend that you put on like contour and border and that'll do that for you. But I would put that into a different collection from your freestyle line edge collections. So when I do my animation, like the one you saw in the beginning of the video, I had three collections. I had one for the foreground one for the background, and then one for everything that had contour, anything that was cylindrical and stuff like that. Um, another thing you can do if you're having problems with freestyle lines and you're using modifiers is you can go to geometry and the sample modifier, you can tone that down to five. So the lower the samples are, the higher the precision is. So when it comes to the distance to camera modifier, you can use the I like to use the ruler and then I just put in the values and then I do like a quick check here. You know, I'll render it out normal length, then I'll render it out at far length and render it out at close length. 
but like I said earlier, this only works for still images. If you're using it for an animation, sadly, it does not work. You get you get this hideous effect and you can try it for yourselves, but I'm going to tell you guys now, you're going to you're not going to like it. It's it's just this staticky, ugly effect. Um, and it's fast. It's not even like it's a slow pulsing. It's a very fast change of things. So for the noise, it's because noise is calculated every frame. And for the distance to edge, it's because distance from camera is because if your camera is animated and moving, then every single time, every single frame your camera moves, the weight of the freestyle line changes. So sadly, it causes this, this flickering effect that we don't want. So to avoid that, you can just use the freestyle line, go to the uh, thickness of it and just have it regular and don't use modifiers. So in the compositing, it's really super, super easy to set up. You just have an alpha over and you just plug them in and boom, you, you got your freestyle lines in your render settings. So I will be doing a compositing video for the entire environment to show you guys more broadly what goes into it because it does get complicated in the compositor sometimes, depending on how much work you're putting in. But in this, this scenario, just for the house, it's just one house. There's not much compositing you really need to do. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys an example. So I just showed you what the freestyle line settings and everything is for the one house. So right now I have my entire environment with a white emission shader. I'm going to render this out with just a broad uh, freestyle line setting where I have silhouette, border, contour, and freestyle and edge mark because I have, like you can see here, I have this, this light post and I have a few other things. So, you know, you're going to need those for rounded objects and stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in part six.